Hey everybody, Baja next to be here. Um, those of you who've been following me for a while are already pretty familiar with the fact that I do a lot of political commentary in social media. Um, I don't really do a lot of video content on it, so I'm going to try to change that a little bit. Uh, I know there are a lot of people out there who genuinely like what I have to say about things and try to engage me on that and, and see, throw, bounce ideas around and stuff. So um, I'm going to try to make that a little bit more frequent and just share some of the cool things that I find on the internet. Uh, one of which is here from Marina Medvin, who is a senior columnist at townhall.com and an award-winning trial attorney and a proud American. I've never heard of her before in my life. I just threw her a follow. I would recommend throwing her a follow as well. She was retweeted by Cassandra Fairbanks, another account that I would highly recommend you go say what's up to her. Um, she's phenomenal. Uh, along with another uh, number of other people, if you check my retweets, you'll see a lot of uh, people that I clearly either endorse their message or them as uh, personalities anyway. Uh, anyway, let's get to the meat and bones of what we're talking about here. This is a really cool find today. Um, Marina tweets, Trump's administration cracks down on racist teachings in various executive branch agencies. And she quotes a document below. So we're going to get into it, um, read the document, see what's going on with that, and uh, it's pretty exciting. I read it already. It's it's pretty neat. Check it out. Office, Executive Office of the President, Office of Management and Budget. This comes from the director, Russell Vaught. Memorandum for the heads of executive departments and agencies. It was written today, the 4th of September, when this was recorded. Subject, training in the federal government. And we'll just get into it now. It has come to the president's attention that executive branch agencies have spent millions of taxpayer dollars to date training government workers to believe divisive anti-American propaganda. For example, according to press reports, employees across the executive branch have been required to attend trainings where they are told that, quote, virtually all white people contribute to racism, or where they are required to say that, quote, they benefit from racism. According to press reports, in some cases, these trainings have further claimed that there is racism embedded in the belief that America is the land of opportunity, or the belief that the most qualified person should receive a job. These types of trainings not only run counter to the fundamental beliefs for which our nation has stood since its inception, but they also engender division and resentment within the federal workforce. We can be proud that as an employer, the federal government has employees of all races, ethnicities, and religions. We can be proud that Americans from all over the country seek to join our workforce and dedicate themselves to public service. We can be proud of our continued efforts to welcome all individuals who seek to serve their fellow Americans as federal employees. However, we cannot accept our employees receiving training that seeks to undercut our core values as Americans and drive division within our workforce. The president has directed me to ensure that federal agencies cease and desist from using taxpayer dollars to fund these divisive, un-American propaganda training sessions. Accordingly, to that end, the Office of Management and Budget will shortly issue more detailed guidance on implementing the president's directive. In the meantime, all agencies are directed to begin to identify all contracts or other agency spending related to any training on critical race theory, white privilege, or any other training or propaganda effort that teaches or suggests either one, that the United States is an inherently racist or evil country, or two, that any race or ethnicity is inherently racist or evil. In addition, all agencies should begin to identify all available avenues within the law to cancel any such contracts and or to divert federal dollars away from these un-American propaganda training sessions. The President and his administration are fully committed to the fair and equal treatment of all individuals in the United States. The president has a proven track record of standing for those whose voice has long been ignored and who have failed to benefit from all our country has to offer, and he intends to continue to support all Americans, regardless of race, religion, or creed. The divisive, false, and demeaning propaganda of the critical race theory movement is contrary to all we stand for as Americans and should have no place in the federal government. Now that's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. I'm actually really excited for that. Um, this document here, if it's to be believed, if it's authentic, which uh, comes from a news source, I'll try to verify it later, but so far, uh, based on everything that we know about Donald Trump, it seems legit. Because this, this is definitely the sort of thing that he would push against. And 
I heard about it about a month ago, I think, uh, that the government was starting to do training sessions for uh, sensitivity training, uh, uh, teaching critical race theory, and, and all these other things that, that, quite honestly, I've been seeing them pop up since at least like 2010, 2011. Um, people trying to push soft Marxism into academia, which they succeeded, right? It's taught everywhere now, which is really frustrating. Uh, and then trying to use that push to go into the government. Now, if you uh, look up Yuri Bezmenov, I think is his name, he was a defector of the KGB back in the, in the Cold War. And he actually laid out the entire strategy that the Soviets were trying to use to overtake America. And don't forget, Soviets weren't the only communists, so is China. And the tactics have worked to infiltrate the United States, um, as far as I can tell. Because communism isn't as much of a dirty word as Nazism, despite the extremely high body count. Uh, we, we, and Nazism is terrible, don't get me wrong, right? And it's, it's racist and divisive and evil. Uh, but communism seeks to do largely the same thing, uh, but for our benefit, right? That's the way I see it. And history has shown that time and again, uh, from the Soviet Russians to uh, communist China and the, you know, the Maoist movement, which... I mean, that, those two alone left hundreds of million, uh, over 100 million dead, I think, collectively. Uh, the Khmer Rouge and the killing fields in Cambodia was absolutely, uh, absolutely atrocious. Uh, and we see it in other countries. I don't, even, I don't need to go through them all. Uh, but uh, the more that you look at communism as it's risen as a, as a state entity in places where it wasn't already there, you start to see the same kinds of patterns. So to see finally some pushback from this administration regarding the encroaching ideology of Marxism, which ultimately leads to communism intentionally, deliberately, is very, um, it's very promising and it gives me a lot of hope for America going forward because we're really close, we're, as far as I believe, teetering on the edge of losing the freedoms that we have as Americans that make this country what it is, right? They won't make America great. I believe that we live in the greatest country of the world because we live in the one country that has the most amount of freedom and it's not perfect. And uh, if you look at my tweets, you'll see there are a lot of things that we that we still need to fix, a lot of things that we do wrong. Um, but there's nowhere else in the world that can do it, uh, that can fix them like we can and nowhere else in the world that I would rather be. Uh, no other state I'd rather be than in Florida right now, I'll be honest, too. <laughs> That's another discussion for another time. But uh, thanks, you guys, for watching. And um, I don't have an end bump, so I'm just going to hit stop recording. But I appreciate uh, if you if you like the content, right? I appreciate everybody who's made it to the end. If you like the content, feel free to follow me on Twitter. I'm going to post this on YouTube as well. I'd have to clip a part of it for Twitter, probably. But uh, pretty cool stuff. So I'm going to try to make more of these at least once a week, and uh, catch you guys next time.